general admission is only $9.50 for adults. Alright, so there are a few things that are closed at the zoo. Hey everybody, Tom here for Tom's Road Trippin'. I am in Evansville, Indiana, visiting the Mesco Park Zoo and Botanical Garden. Let me take this off just for a moment. Face masks are required for indoors and entry into the zoo only. And out in the open part of the zoo, they are not required unless social distancing cannot be established. I got my hat. If you are familiar with my channel, I always get a hat all the places I go to. I went to the gift shop first with my face mask on, got my hat, so I am ready to start walking around the tour. Bit of an overcast day, Ew. so even though there's not going to be a lot of sunlight, I always make sure I have my head protected because I don't want to be burned. So I'm going to try to find a map. If not, I have a paper map that was given to me so we can get a layout of the land, so to speak. And I'll decide which direction if there's not a one-way path and we'll start seeing some animals. So right out in front of the gift shop in the main entry they have a new habitat being constructed for the penguins. The new area is going to be called Penguins of Patagonia. Alright so this is the map. Not a huge property but they do have a lot to offer. They do have a one-way path, which is good. Keep everybody going in the same direction so you're not crisscrossing paths. So we're going to follow the path to the right. This is the main entrance. So we're going to start with Amazonia and work our way around. You can see they got the one-way path. Let you know which way to go. All right, Amazonia, force of riches. So we are inside the rainforest building. Let's see some animals in here. Alright, first up we got a kill build toucan. Trying to get a shot of him. Now, even though we are inside the building, the animals are kept behind netting. So that is a toucan. A black howler monkey. See one up here. Right, next up, we got a white-faced sake monkey. And this guy's up here. Make some chittering noises. Got this awesome waterfall. It really feels like you're in the Amazon with all the the native plant life. And the rocks, walking past, really nicely done. There's a little, little monkey from the back view. We got some emerald tree boas. Looks like we got two of them here. We got a giant cockroach. Like they have one of these guys in the house. Got Wong Tong bat and Jamaican fruit bat. They're very quick. You can see when they're fluttering around. You can see the top, I'm guessing. Got the prehensile tailed porcupine. This guy's habitat. Got the nice waterfall. All sorts of space down below. But well, he's actually right up here. It's cute. It's losing away. I see the very relaxing with the waterfall. Got a screaming hairy armadillo. Now, I have never seen this particular species of armadillo before. That's kind of cool. You guys can roll up in a ball, protect themselves. We got some happy bear us. And bear's paper. Uh, so the happy bear and the paper are not out yet. They're getting the habitat all ready for the day. Nice 
under the boardwalk view of the waterfall. We have some ducks and go in the water. Alright, so following the path down, come to the water here. This is what we'll find in this habitat area. Dwarf Cayman. Some big old sharp teeth on them. You can see the rest of them under the water. Ah, that's slick. It's all balanced on that wood. You can see all the fish. They're all little small fishies. I don't know if he eats these or doesn't eat them and they don't bother him. Not really sure. So we got this another area of water here. A huge piranha. It's pretty. We got more fish over in this other area. <laughs> Of various sizes. We got a jaguar. Wow. I know. Look at his paws. They're just hanging. Beautiful cat. Very, very beautiful. You see his ears You see his ears. So, in addition to the inside portion, the Jaguar does have an outside habitat to enjoy and more stuff to lounge around and climb on. Like a swampy looking lake over here. This is natural algae. It's not a sign of decay, it's a sign of health for the ecosystem. Alright, so the Mesca Park Zoo opened in 1928. So there's a mixture of newer buildings and older buildings, older habitats that have not yet been updated. So there's a nice mixture of old and new. They are doing some renovations of certain areas. Like I said at the beginning of the video, they're building on a whole new penguin habitat. So that's something people in the area have to look forward to. All right, Dogtown USA. The prairie dogs, looks like they got some new babies. See the prairie dog now. Coming out to eat. There he is, munching away on his vegetables. He's got to dig holes. Oh, the others are hiding. All right, Mexican wolf. We're just walking around, now they're all laying down. Sorry. I need to focus on the wolf, he's not the move. I was going to guess really seven. And I was like, he's tall. He is Okay. Yeah, she has been. She was 95 percentile for height at birth. And she's 97. Alright, they got the family garden. So backyard birds, these are wild birds. Oh, now this is nice. His name is Wally. It's a chainsaw wood carving. Well, there's still pops of color. This place has got to look beautiful during the springtime. We're in the midst of fall or autumn starting up. We got a nice rock garden. And still some nice pops of yellow. Alright, so showing the map again. You see where I'm at. Right near the family garden. We pass up the lotus pond. So we're going over to Discovery Center. And then we'll check out the African Rift. 
and work our way around. All right, in this cage you got a turkey vulture and the turkey vultures. Looks like there's two in here. He's had his wings all spread out. And red-tailed hawk. See the red-tailed hawk. All right, and bald eagle. Bald eagle's got a little bit darker head than I'm used to seeing. Hopefully one day these guys will be out of cages and be in more natural settings. All right, giraffe. Zebra. They're like a Having some food. Okay, let's go up here. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't know what RL is. There's the giraffes again. So you got another giraffe in the back portion. And we also got Grant's zebra. Did you see that here? The Grant's zebra. So giraffe feeding is off. For time being, normally you'd be able to feed them from this area. We got some Sitatunga. So normally you'd get to walk into this area. However, it is off limits to go into. But you can see right by the wall. Sorry, I lost him for a second. There we go. Sitatunga. So cute. So to keep people on a one-way path, side paths are blocked off. So currently, the directional arrows are pretty much obsolete on the post here. We're going to be following the green this way signs. So some of the gardens are Looks like they are starting to die off, which happens during the fall and autumn season. Winter and uh, the end of the year is not a good time to come looking at flowers. Spring would be the best time. Uh, Roy and Ocelot. So the Ocelot, got a good view of the Ocelot. Oh wow, look at that. Come right up close. Wow, I love the coloring and the pattern on the fur. All right, going inside the Discovery Center. So, masks on. There you go. Hi, Kith McCaw. And they are up above on their perch. I'm sorry about the reflection of the light. All right, a Fiji banded iguana. It's right here, front and center. Spider tortoise. We get two. I got lesser hedgehog Tenric. And there's three of them in here, and they're all underneath this rock. See the one sticking out. All cuddled up together. And this habitat has a white tree frog. We got a Frankois Langwer. Multiples in here. And we got the youngs in the back. We got an Egyptian tortoise. Alright, so we're going to see a pygmy slow loris, chestnut breasted macola, and crested wood portridge. That's a cute bird. The crested wood portridge is down below. And I was looking for the pygmy loris. It looks like he's inside this ball because I can see the fuzz sticking out the bottom and then on top. Alright, red panda. 
I always love seeing these guys. So cool looking. Washing. Okay, I apologize for the reflection. But they have different insects. As you can see. So different varieties that they've got. Especially the big moths and butterflies. Frank Hoyce's Languor have an outdoor habitat as well, except they're all indoors at the moment. It looks like their little door is open, so they can come out here if they choose to do so. Red Panda also has an outdoor area it can come out to. It's a white stork. She's doing her bird stuff, yeah. Our next up, lemur forest. So we'll see red rough lemur and cockerel sifka and ring tailed lemur. Oh wow. This is awesome. You know, I don't believe I've ever seen these types of lemurs before. Super fuzzy. I like the colorations. Wow, that is awesome. That is awesome, man. All right, so from what I gathered from that, the lemurs share the habitat, but they're not in there at the same time, apparently. I'm not really sure. All right, so the Clay Memorial Zoo building has restrooms that are open. Just what we'll see in here, hopefully. All right, the Komodo dragon. There he is, or she. One big lizard. Got all sorts of space. A western hognose snake. We got a dumbrel's boa. Just moving around. You can still see him. Yes, his coloration. He's got a Bismarck ringed python. There we go. Very nice. Got a Madagascar tree boa. I was looking up in the trees, as the name suggests, but he's here on the bottom. Rhinoceros iguana. This guy's home. Is there having breakfast? We also got creatures of the night. Very dark habitats area. Unfortunately, it is blocked off. So I can't really show you much. I see something here. So it's an indoor habitat for the Indian rhinoceros. I'll have to wait till we're outside to see them. All right, Indian rhinoceros. Down here in the water, cooling off, or not really hot, but I guess it's comfortable. So the guy does have more space with just that little water hole area. Well, that explains it. Typically found in swamps, marshes, and wetlands. I'm going to go across the rope bridge.
Whoa. This one's not very bouncy. All right, a Dabra tortoise. Here we go. Oh, so we got some gibbons. Kind of hard to see. There we go. All right, Sichuan talking. Sorry, trying to get him into frame. Two others off to the side. One better view of the Takin. Now what I find to be a little interesting is you got the tiger habitat <laughs> directly next to it. So this tiger gets to spend all day looking at something he can't get to. You got Siberian tiger. So you can see what he's got his eyes on. It's going to be quite interesting for this tiger being directly next to some animal that I'd probably like to have for lunch. Alright, African Spurred Tortoise. And with them got Northern Leopard Tortoise. Got a little guy here. You got a big one here against the fence. And then another one. It's kind of stretched out a little bit. Alright, we got Bactrin Camel or Two Hump Camel. Because they're fuzzy covered. I'm curious if it's because he's in a northern state. Usually when I see them, they don't have a lot of hair, but that's down south, of course. Got this nice crane in there with the camels. You shouldn't got to worry about cutting the grass here as much. So we got Barasinga. Got a Malayan sun bear. Let me get some food pellets down there for him. That's a cute bear. Even better view of the Sichuan Takin around the path. All right, emu. Got some emu. And with the emu, we got some sheep. There is no signage. That lets me know what type of sheep this is. So if you know what this is, leave a description and timestamp in the comments below so that way we'll all learn something. Kookaburra. Oh, I love seeing these birds. They're just so cool looking. And Keshley. And sometimes you'll catch them when they are very chatty. This one's not making noise at the moment. We've got Asian brown tortoise. And the other one just walking all around. Well he was a second ago anyway. There's the goaty goat area. This area is closed at the moment. So you can't go and pet the animals like you normally would be able to. Got some donkeys. And a miniature horse or a pony. 
think it's a miniature horse. Alright, white mandolin Columbus monkeys. Let's see how fuzzy they are. Especially their tail. Another one up high. The climbing area for the kitties is closed off for now. Alright, river otter. No, I don't see the river otter right now. Information, river city otters. It's between otters and beavers. The water's running, so I'm assuming he's in the habitat somewhere. Just not viewable at the moment. The Magic Meadow stage where they would have animal presentations, but there are none right now because of social distancing. There we got Deep Raza's monkey. Let's see him here eating something off the ground. What's up, buddy? How you doing? It's like, leave me alone, I'm eating. There's a second one. Oh, we got a nice scarlet macaw. How you doing? Were you shaking? He's got his paw up. How are you? Hello! Oh, you do talk. Okay, hi. Pretty bird, huh? Very pretty bird. Alright, crested porcupine. It's right here on the ground. See those big long quills. If you got a hound dog, you want to keep them away from animals like this. Alright, we got budgie walkabout. Right here, the Jirigar. So they currently do not have feedings because you don't want to touch the birds. Let's go. I always had parakeets growing up as pets. Come in various color combinations. Usually blue and green with black on them, but they also come in white. You see one of the white versions. See, we got an apple or a pear. Now, in a normal operating Situation if you feed the animals, they do have a hand washing station if the bird lands on you. All right, to get the Engelbrecht carousel yeah, that is operating. You have a clean the animals in between riders. So the carousel costs two tokens. Carousel. She loved going on carousels when I was a child. All right, so showing you a zoo map. We are right near the carousel. Right where it says paddle boats. You see the star you are here. So we're going to continue along the path past Port Victoria and head to the left towards Africa. Alright, Port Victoria. This is where you would normally rent paddle boats. But paddle boats are off for the season. And a nice cool breeze right by the water. Definitely fall weather. We do have a small playground here with stuff to climb on and swing on. Alright, we got an Abyssinian ground hornbill. He's got some leaves in his mouth. Hi! Oh wow, what an awesome bird. Hi! How are you? Comes the other one. Wow! What you get the leaves for, buddy? Huh? What you doing? 
It's nice to see me with it. And thanks for stopping to talk. I'll see you later. He was just pegging at the fence. And there's big old drumsticks on him. Or her. I don't know. I moved over to talk to the other one. And the one with the leaves in his mouth came running over and pushed him out of the way. Because he didn't want me talking to the other one. <laughs> Bye, you two. Play nice. All right, we got a Stanley Crane and a Blue Duker. Stanley Crane and the Blue Duker right over here. Hi, baby. And the Blue Duker is smaller than the yellow duker, which I typically see in zoos. Hi, sweetheart. Lady was saying this is full grown. Hi. Don't want to ignore the crane. Cranes are equally nice. So you got different types of animals in this habitat. You got springbok, greater kudu, ostrich. All the animals are further back. So this is all part of the same habitat we saw the Abyssinian ground hornbill in. And what I thought was an emu, I should have known because it's larger is a female ostrich. All right, giant anteater. Got two of them. Just looking for bugs. All right, so I made my way back to the front of the zoo. We got Wild Rivers Trading Company where I got my hat. And right next to that is Rainforest Grill. I'm gonna go check that out next. All right, Rainforest Grill. This is their menu they have. All right, since I made my initial walk through all the habitats, there was only a few animals that I did not get to see. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to go back now I always recommend when you visit a zoo, if you don't see the animal the first time in the habitat, go back a little bit later. You usually get a better chance of seeing them, especially if you come in early in the morning. It's possible the animal's not out yet, or they're still in their nighttime habitat. So always go back if it's an animal you truly want to see. All right, so I came back to the prairie dogs. And there are two of them out now. Still munching away. Yeah. The Mexican wolves are up closer now. Such pretty animals. <laughs> See why people love dogs. Just want to go pet them. But of course, you can't do that. All right, both giraffes are out now. Well, the Frank Hoist's Langwer are outside. Same with the Red Panda. I see two of them now. This one's eating. It's eating bamboo. Just like the black and white panda bears. There's the other one just literally hanging out. Alright, so this is part of the Clouded Leopards habitat. It's my second time coming back and he is not available or she's not available. Yeah, their indoor perimeter door is closed. 
some animals are more susceptible to COVID-19 some of the cat species so it's off habitat right now apparently all right the Patagonian Mara is out now this little critter is in with the giant anteater of course he wasn't available the first time I came through sure he was in here he just I just didn't get to see him here we go I'm trying to make my camera focus on the animal not the fence and there is one of the giant anteaters All right, so I'm back at the front again. I'm at exit through the gift shop. Show you that briefly. Now, there was only a few animals that I didn't get to see because they were off habitat. I did go back for the otter again. I still didn't see it, so there was no sense filming it a second time. It said the leopard off habitat. A few of the lemurs. I don't know if they share the same habitat or what the deal is. So other than that, I saw everything the zoo has to offer. The buildings that were open, most of them were. There was only a couple places that were not accessible to the public. Night creatures primarily inside the one building. All right, so I'm gonna go inside Wild Rivers Trading Company. I'm just gonna give you a quick overview. It's typical gift shop type stuff. Lots of plush, small toys for the kids, collectibles. They do have a small selection of, of shirts. Now they didn't have any hats that were standalone. So what I did is I purchased, it's the same, same hat. And it comes with a shirt for $28.99. So don't typically get shirts, but it helps fund the zoo, so I didn't mind spending a little bit extra for a shirt. Lots of other little, little knickknacks and collectibles. Smaller things for the kids to purchase with any zoo. Very popular with school groups, church groups, summer camps, things like that. So lots of games. More collectible sets and puzzles. All right, everybody, that was my visit to Mestro Park Zoo and Botanical Garden. Although the Botanical Garden portion is not really nice looking this time of year, uh, during springtime would be the best time to come for that. But I enjoyed my visit here. Not a huge property, but they did have a nice selection of animals. A few of them that I've never seen before. That's always a plus. I like that. Be able to see new animals that I've not previously seen in zoos. So if you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. So that way I know that you enjoyed the video. I love going to these types of places. I'm a big animal fanatic. Big into conservation efforts. Save endangered species. Zoos play a key role in that. Animals in the wild are routinely losing their habitat and dying off in droves. So oftentimes zoos are a last resort to help the species from going extinct because once they're gone, they're gone. So thanks for watching. Leave me a comment, subscribe if you've already done so, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.